everyone. Thanks for joining the Voyagers National Park Association and me, your Voyager Explorer. Today, we are going to explore Voyagers National Park and the wolves that live there. We are way up at the top of Minnesota along the Canadian border. And this map shows you just how big the park is. It is 218,000 acres and goes from the northwest corner by International Falls and Rainy Lake all the way down to Crane Lake in the southeast. And we have wolves that live throughout the park. Did you know that our state of Minnesota has more wolves than any other state except for Alaska? According to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, we have more than 2,000 wolves that live here. And some of them live in Voyagers National Park. So today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how the wolves of Voyagers survive in the park and how they find, catch, and take down prey when they're hunting. Scientists from Voyagers National Park and the University of Minnesota study the wolf packs that live in and around Voyagers National Park. Oh wait, do you know what a wolf pack is? Well, a pack is a group. So a wolf pack is a group of wolves that live together, their family and maybe some friends. For example, everybody that you live with, your family and friends, would be thought of, of a people pack. The scientists also know where the wolves live in and around Voyagers National Park. You can see these yellow outlines, that shows where the different packs live, such as Cranberry Bay Pack, Shoe Pack Lake, sand point and so on. And you'll notice that the wolf packs are named after natural features that are in that area. Have you ever thought about how a wolf manages to hunt prey and survive, especially in places like Minnesota, where we have very snowy, cold, and icy winters? Well, wolves have adaptations. Adaptations are a big word for a tool. They have, oh, well, I guess wolves probably don't use hammers, but they may use something like a coat. You might not think of a coat as a tool, but if you think of it as something that helps you to stay warm in the winter, you could certainly think of it as a coat. Yes. A wolf's coat could be considered an adaptation or a tool that helps it to survive. The wolf's coat is soft and thick. You can see it's a grayish color, maybe considered brownish. And when you look up close, there's actually two layers of hair. There's a first layer that's tough guard hairs. That helps repel the dirt and water. Then, if you look closely underneath, there's a second layer of dense water resistant undercoating that helps insulate the wolf. In addition to its coat, the wolf has other tools that help it as it hunts. What we're gonna look at now is how its senses have adaptations that it uses while it's hunting for prey. What does it use to find the prey? Like dogs, a wolf's best sense of prey, excuse me, best sense of, is its sense of smell. The wolf uses its nose to be able to get a picture of what's going on in the environment and see what's happening around it. The wolf's sense of smell is 100 times better 
than our sense of smell. Wolves are pretty shy animals. We don't often get a chance to see them in action using their nose or their sense of smell to find prey because as soon as they get a whiff of us humans, they're probably going to stop, turn around, and go the other We can, however, look at photos that the scientists who study the wolves were able to get from their trail cameras. In this first picture, at 9.28 and 56 seconds on August 10th, a wolf comes through. And you can see it looks like it's sniffing the trail to see what kind of information it can gather about the environment and what kind of animals came by. In this photo, it's sniffing in another direction to see what other information it can get and where the scent is the strongest. Because depending on how strong a scent is, it can tell the wolf which direction the animal was going, how recent it passed by, and even if an animal is injured or sick. Here, you see that the wolf is going back to its original direction, continuing to follow that path, because what it might have realized is that four days ago, on August 6th, in the same exact place, a beaver came by. So that wolf might have figured out that the beaver went by, it's going to find it, and looking forward to having a tasty dinner. Another tool that the wolf has to help it as it finds prey are its eyes. And you might have noticed that at night, the wolf's eyes look like they're glowing. That's called night shine. The wolf has a reflective surface in its eye, so when light hits it, it reflects back, and the wolf is able to use the light twice, sort of like a built-in flashlight. But since the wolf's eyes are adapted for looking for prey and being able to see better in the dark than we do, they don't have such a good sense of color vision like we have. Before we end today's session, we're gonna talk about one more wolf adaptation or tool. Okay, I know wolves don't use hammers, but they do have ears. Wolves ears are another adaptation that they have. Their ears are very big, especially in relation to their body size. I am much bigger than a wolf, but when you compare my ears to the wolf ear, look how much smaller my ears are. Having these big ears helps a wolf be a better hunter in finding prey. And just like your dog, wolves are able to use their ears to hear sounds that are very quiet or very far away or very high-pitched. They can hear the high pitch of a bat sound. So that's another way that they're adapted when they're hunting and finding prey. This has been fun learning about wolves today. I hope you'll join me, the Voyager Explorer, next time when we continue learning about adaptations and other things about wolves. Until then though, I do have some things you can do at home. If you wanna be a wolf expert, Go to our voyagers.org opt-in side page for at-home activities that you can do in conjunction with this wolf lesson. There include some drawings, a wolf find, and questions to test your knowledge as a wolf expert. We'll see you next time.